Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today we're gonna to be unboxing the Corsair Xenon Flex OLED monitor that literally can change from flat to curved. It's very cool. Is it a gimmick? Probably, but let's check it out anyway. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so this kind of unboxes like a TV. You're gonna unbox it from the top. This is an LG display. It's an LG OLED, which means we're probably going to have fringing problems with text. Uh, which is to be expected. G-Sync, 45 inches, a PPI of I think around 83 pixels per inch, so it's pretty low, but again, uh, this is kind of a supercar for Corsair. It's kind of just showing what they're capable of designing, because obviously this was an LG display, but then Corsair put a whole lot of engineering into it. Uh, so in here we have the nice little envelope. Looks like a color calibration report. Yeah, so the Delta E average and everything else. There's your color calibration report, which is pretty cool. Gamma, very, very cool. Hit a 2.19. Going for a cooler color temperature rather than 6,500 Kelvins, uh, which is fine. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Nice they include that in the box. Although for $2,000, $2,000 is a lot of money. But again, this is a supercar of the display world. Here we have the one side of the power connection. And then here we have the power brick, which has a nice Corsair logo on it, nice and clean. Also in the box, we have an HDMI cable, a DisplayPort cable, a USB Type-C cable, and then a USB Type-A to USB Type-C, uh, which is not in display. This one is display, this one is not display. Then we have the top or the bottom half of the stand that's large and fairly heavy. Let's open it up. All right, so this is the bottom of the stand. This feels cold. Yep, whole thing's metal. This entire thing right here, it's even got a little grip handle. Look at that, nice little handle. Bottom is all rubber, high quality thumb screw that you can uh, turn with your just your hands. This is literally a piece of metal. That's okay, well, $2,000 so far, it looks pretty nice. Look at how big this is on the desk, just the stand. That is a massive stand. All right, so after we get this, we're supposed to lift this off. Now, once this is off, that shows you the display itself, which then to get this out, we might, take this out. Yeah, you're gonna take this out. Then you got these clips on the side, just like a TV. Some TVs come like this, and you're gonna pop those clips out. And then on the other side, then once that's out, you should be able to lift this out, and this has kind of like a false bottom. And then guys, here we have the panel. This is a little bit scary, guys. Come to the side. It already has the height adjustable part. I think it's height adjustable on the side. Look at how thin this is. That's, that's a little scary. All right, guys, we're gonna see if I can just take this right out. Yeah, there we go. A little stressful. Okay, I'm gonna set this down now, just like that. Oh, it's so thin, that's so scary. All right, we're gonna see if we can put this on there now. A lot of cool things. Is this a handle? Is this a handle on the display? Can I grab that? I'm not going to. I'm gonna grab it. Ooh, it moves. Okay, we're gonna put the stand in on the bottom first, and then we're gonna just slide this right onto the desk. Only one screw for this massive stand. Um, they got two little holes there, but now you can see right away, we have some inputs on the front, which I do want to say for 2000 bucks, right? I'm not going to hate right off the bat, but Corsair is really good with design. This doesn't look that great. What is that little symbol right there? That doesn't look super premium. This does, right? The nice Corsair logo, but that little joystick also doesn't look the best. It's kind of offset. Uh, it doesn't match up perfectly. Those feet feel kind of cheap. So that's kind of interesting. All right, let's get this on the desk um, and not break it. Okay, putting this behemoth on the desk, you're going to pull this off. Oh yes, okay. Oh my God, that is massive. That is massive. I see a little scratch right here and there's a sticker right on the front of the panel. Please tell me that there's a plastic coat. Okay, there's plastic on the front. The panel isn't scratched. All right, we're gonna take it off. Oh, okay. I thought it was a glossy display. That's why I got so excited. This is the plastic. This is the matte finish. No, why do they have to do a matte finish? Okay, it's fine. We're, we're gonna see if it's, if it's still pretty or not. All right, now this is a matte finish. It's an LG panel. Uh, so they seem to be putting matte finishes on all their OLEDs that are monitor technology. Uh, so we'll see how it looks, but this is crazy. I have to flip this around. I have to figure out a way to flip this around. All right, okay, we're doing it. Okay, look at that. Now that is a back of a monitor. See, this is the interesting thing here. You have this unbelievably amazing design elements back here that is not just designed, but literally usable. Uh, and then those front ports just don't look that great. Uh, so that's a little a bit of an oversight. Back here, all plastic. And then you have these crazy, these, these are gonna be the things that curve it. I think you just pull those out on each side. I'm gonna watch the video. I'm gonna watch the video. I don't wanna break this. Whoa, okay. All right, so that's how you do it. We're not gonna do it until it's on because I think that's gonna look crazy. 
The back of this looks awesome. We got a lot of ports, let's go over them. We got two HDMI's here, we got a display port, USB type C, which is, you can see display as well as um, data. You have USB type A, USB type A, another USB type C that is just charging. You have the power in, and then on the front of this, you have even more with your joystick and everything else. You already saw that. Let's get this thing set up. We're gonna do initial impressions of it. We're gonna do a gaming test. We're gonna do ghosting test. We know the ghosting test is gonna be perfect, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, we're gonna check out the color fringing. We're gonna check out a lot of things. Let's do it now. All right, guys, now with it all set up, it's quite easy to actually set up. The ports are quite easy to get to and very easy to hide the cables. Look at how big this is. This is a 63 inch desk. Obviously I have my PC on it and uh, yeah, it's quite big. I, in fact, I'm gonna have to move this lamp to do the curve, but let's turn it on. Power button right here, nice little light. Now first we're gonna write into display settings. Make sure this is going at full 240 hertz. Absolutely awesome. Now, the first thing you notice is um, the PPI is low, right? We're at a time and a point uh, where LG decided to make a very low PPI display, uh, but they wanted massive, massive displays. Big bezels here, pretty big, pretty large bezels. The screen's bezel isn't that big, but you can see because of this design, which is fine, because it, it literally bends. It's massive, it's great. So the first thing I wanna test out is text, uh, which I can already see, I think is pretty bad. So we're just gonna go in and yeah. So we have the same thing that was, if you guys saw my review of the uh, 27 inch LG OLED, it's the exact same thing here. You're probably not gonna be able to see it on this video, but there's, yeah, there's color fringing, it's pretty bad. But again, if you're getting one of these OLEDs, uh, don't get it for creative work. Uh, the other thing is uh, there's a pretty bad, like the matte finish is really, really bad. It's again, it's, it looks like the same one that is on the 27 inch LG OLED. But again, right, the 27 inch OLED um, was something that I think a lot of people were gonna buy. These displays I think are more of like a supercar, how like companies make their supercars because they're crazy, but not very many people buy them because it's a statement, uh, it's a staple, uh, and it shows what the brand is capable of. So that's what this is. Um, and I think, well, we gotta do the curve. Okay, so we're gonna press these little buttons. So you press in that button and you pull the handle out. Okay, they're actually, plastic handles, we'll go to this side, which I barely have enough space to, and I pulled it out. Okay, now they said I just pull it, so we're gonna try this. This is, oh, that is, it's like lifting the back up. That is crazy. I'm using quite a bit of force here, okay? I just wanna say that. Ooh, okay, that side clicked. I don't, did this side click? Is it just one click? Oh, God, okay. They gotta make the curving a little bit easier, guys, because that was stressful. Each side clicks independently, you have to put some muscle into it. Um, we're gonna put these handles back in. I love how they're retractable. It's a quite, quite curved. I don't know if you can see on video, but it's quite curved. It's an OLED. It's not super bright, right? Don't expect high brightness here from really any OLED at this point. But I mean, that is so crazy. I gotta do it. I gotta go back. We're gonna get these handles out, see if I can do it better this time. Okay, folding it back is not as big of a deal. Is it gonna click in? when it's flat or no. Is it perfectly flat now? Nope, a little bit of a curve. Does it snap back into place? I don't wanna break this. Oh, okay. Snaps back into place. How many times is that gonna work before it breaks? Guys, I do not know. <laughs> that is still shocking though. I can see a real world situation where if they get this down, make it a little bit easier to bend that, I mean, think about this, for editing and then going into gaming, because obviously a curved panel is maybe not the best, especially that intense of a curve. All right. I, I, I'm geeking out, let's go right into, display settings are great, we got uh, 3440 by 1440p, we're at 240 hertz. Let's hop in game, see how this thing does. But before that, let's go into the menu system, which is using this little joystick, which is quite weird. Um, brightness is not at 100%, so that's, that's a good thing. So let's turn that up. Yeah, and it does get brighter. It's still overall fairly dim, but again, brightness of um, an OLED will change. Uh, so it definitely will change, however you're spending $2,000 for something that is still fairly low brightness. But you guys know my feelings about that. I'm not gonna tell you whether you should or shouldn't buy it because of that. Tons of settings here. Um, we have image refresh for the OLED stuff, the variable refresh rate, everything. Uh, HDR there, we have HDR. Okay, cool. Let's hop right in game, see how this thing does. But to do that, we're gonna, we're gonna bend this. Oh, oh my God, that is, okay, that one clicked. Are you supposed to hold both of them? Whew, that is absolutely crazy. What does the back look like? So they get this like thinner plastic on the back. This stuff, you can hear that. It's a really thin plastic. Oh, that's crazy. Now, no height adjustability. There's no height adjustability on this. Pure blast with an OLED, which looks great. 
Colors look great, 98.5% of DCI P3 color space. But again, the matte finish, if they just didn't do the matte finish, and I know that's not Corsair, that's LG. Let's hop right in game. 240 hertz, 1440p. We are not in HDR, we're in SDR right now. Let's see how it does. I just wanna say right away, it's a very intense curve uh, and it is a very large display. I'm gonna put these handles back in uh, and it looks really good, right? There's some problems. Uh, with these OLEDs, right? Text fringing problems, not a very high PPI, lower brightness than I would want from a $2,000 display, but it looks really good. All right, so hopping right in game, very responsive. It's massive. I am not used to a display that is this big. Um, most of the display is in your peripheral. So for FPS games, may not be the best, uh, just because it's more immersive than anything. It almost feels like I'm in VR. Yeah, that's really interesting. This is a pretty display. Now, the brightness changing, it's an OLED thing. It seems to be doing it a lot, even during gameplay, which is pretty annoying. Something that I don't know if I noticed uh, happening on the other LG OLED. However, yes, the PPI is noticeably dim uh, for sure, but the display is beautiful, although, during gameplay, you get that matte finish here. But again, guys, that's not the point of this display. That's why like, I'm not going to review this in the same way that I'm gonna review other displays because this is not the point of that. No one is not going to be a display enthusiast and spend $2,000 on a display. So you're going to know what you're getting here. Uh, those are the things that you're getting. This is a product that is awesome and they're making it because it's awesome. That's it. This is for publicity. That's the point of this. So me reviewing it in the same way that I reviewed the other OLED is just probably not the best case scenario because that's not the point of this. This is here to be amazing and cool and awesome and something that maybe 0.01% of people buy. Um, and for those people, you're a beta tester, right? OLED technology is, is not quite there yet, but God, is this a step in the right direction? Let's do it again right now. It's just too cool. We're gonna press it back. God, that is crazy. Okay, it's a little bit easier once you get used to it. The difference going from a flat display. I've never had that experience before. Uh, obviously, I've switched between a flat display and a curved display, but I've never literally had the display change while I am using it. Let's do it again. We're gonna pull it. Oh my God, that is crazy. I can definitely see um, if OLEDs do become better and don't get beat out by micro LED before they reach their uh, peak, which is something that is entirely possible, that these curving and flat display technology, if they can make this easier to develop and manufacture, God, this could change all displays, especially gaming displays, uh, because it's so immersive when it's in that curved format, uh, but then it can go back to no curve, it's, it's, oh, it's just shockingly good. Now, there's noticeable pixelation even on like bigger text, right? This has a lower PPI than every display essentially out there. About 80, what is it, 83 pixels per inch? That's, I believe that's what it is. So it's definitely low for sure. But the immersion here is fantastic. Movement is okay. Once you start getting, it's like, oh, now I can see quite a bit of pixelation, right? All of here, uh, all of over here. Basically everything that is that is text, right? It's not super clear and crisp, but you have immersion and you have a lot of gimmicky things that are awesome and actually work. And the main thing is the curve. I mean, what else is there really to say about this? It's an OLED. It's got lower brightness than I would like, but that's every OLED really right now, uh, except maybe the quantum dot OLED that Alienware is doing. This is awesome. It is really cool. I wouldn't say that the, that the curve is a gimmick. Um, I thought it was gonna be more gimmicky than usable and it's just not. If every display had this, I think people would use it a lot. I could see myself uh, turning this from a flat display or like, can you even use it in a semi-curved display, right? Could we push this back like maybe to there, right? That's like a, a nice curve for doing something. I mean, there's just, there's a whole lot of usability here and I really like that. If you're doing creative work, flatten it out. If you're doing uh, gaming, make it curved. Unbelievably cool. Unbelievably cool. All right, let's test out ghosting now. Now, once I left the game, it became significantly dimmer. The OLEDs change brightness. So all these tests that most people are doing, um, including me, they're around 200 nits of the previous OLED, which I'm assuming is probably what this is gonna be. 
doing, it's a little bit higher than that in game because, well, depending on what game you're playing, it's a little bit higher. So right now it's, it's probably doing, I would say probably 180 nits. That's what it looks like. The matte finish is terrible. It's, it's awful, but the ghosting, look at it. Yes, it's exactly what we expect. There is no ghosting. You can even see here, when we leave this, it gets very, very dim, significantly dimmer. And then this gets much brighter actually to a point where in a pretty dim lit room right now we are, uh, it's nice and bright. Although I do see uh, a line right here, which may be two different OLED panels put together, right? It might actually be a two panel setup. I don't actually know about that. Maybe that'll be in the full review, uh, but there's definitely a slight line right here going all the way up it. I don't know if you can see that or not. But guys, should you buy this just from the unboxing? We haven't done the full review yet. That'll be coming in a few weeks. Uh, it will take a little bit longer for this one, but should you buy this? Probably not right? You probably shouldn't unless you have a ton of money to spare. If you got $2,000 sitting around and you want the coolest technology out that is crazy gimmicky, actually quite usable, but very cool. And that is the entire point of it. Yeah, go for it and buy it. But if you're like, you worked hard and you want a monitor that can do it all and it's $2,000, this is not it. This is a gimmick. It's absolutely extraordinarily cool. Let me take the camera, show you the ghosting test. I know some of the enthusiasts watching this lay or watching the channel do want to check that out. So this is what we're going to do. There's none, right? There's none. There's no visible. We're going to turn the ISO down just a little bit and do it again. There's none, right? There's none. This will be a fun one to review, but do keep in mind when I do review this, I'm not going to be reviewing it in the typical sense that I do when it's really all about value and the best buying decision. That's not what this is about. This is a luxury product. Uh, there's no such thing as value here. It's all about being cool. And if that's what you want and you have two grand sitting around, well, you probably can't go wrong. This is definitely one of the coolest monitors out there. Is it one that I would daily? Never in a million years would I daily this. It would be absolutely infuriating to daily due to the matte finish, the text fringing issues, and the biggest real issue overall is the lowest PPI of basically any monitor you can get. It's very, very low PPI. For all those reasons, I would never daily it. But a gaming display that's gimmicky that you can show your friends if you're very rich, absolutely I would do it in a heartbeat if I had a lot more money than I do now. All right, this is Type-C Tech Reviews. You wanna check it out, there's links below. If you wanna buy it, you're a baller watching the channel. But yeah, this is Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the review.